traditional radiation therapy with photons, protons, or electrons, where we're using an ionized external beam radiation therapy to target the cancer. Photodynamic therapy is actually using light therapy to treat cancer. So we give a, what's called a photosensitizer a day or two before the surgery. Um, that, lights, that makes you sensitive to all light, particularly the light that we're going to be delivering in the operating room. Um, so at the time of the surgery, Dr. Freeberg will go in, take out all of the gross disease that he sees, he'll take out the lining of the lung, and at that point, we actually go in with a laser a light therapy and treat the entire chest cavity to try to kill any microscopic residual disease left behind. Unlike regular radiation therapy where you can see both acute side effects from the treatment, such as um, the most common side effects with regular radiation therapy that we see in the chest are feeling tired, uh, having a cough, potentially a sore throat, trouble swallowing from almost like a sunburn inside the throat, and also a sunburn on the skin as well. Um, those acute side effects resolve, but there are potential late side effects from radiation therapy as well. We talked about one, a very rare one, of secondary cancers. With photodynamic therapy, while we can see some acute problems from it, such as inflammation, in addition to the inflammation from the surgery, it doesn't really have any late side effects since it's just like using basically a laser pointer in the operating room to try to kill. The depth of penetration is typically on the order of just millimeters, certainly a centimeter or less. So we're really only trying to kill things that are very, very superficial with this type of light therapy. Um, this will actually segue to what Dr. Sturman uh, brings to the program, which is some very exciting immunotherapy. I would like to say that the photodynamic therapy is a really interesting treatment in that it's been shown through different types of experiments that Killing cells with photodynamic therapy is one of the most effective ways, if not the most effective way, to make them interesting or stimulatory to the immune system. One, one of the reasons cancers become cancers is because these cells get out of control and the immune system is not able to destroy them before they get out of control. And cancer cells often don't look that much different to the immune system than normal cells. When you kill cells with photodynamic therapy, it somehow makes them more presentable, more stimulatory to the immune system. And at Penn, we're not, we started doing the lung sparing surgery because primarily, primarily because of quality of life uh, and also older patients. So for instance, I would never do a pneumonectomy, taking out an entire lung on an 80 year old patient. Whereas we have done that for patients, uh, we, we've, we've done the photodynamic therapy and the lung sparing surgery for, you know, particularly fit elderly patients who want to be aggressive about their cancer and, in fact, have done quite well. That would not be an option to be that aggressive uh, if it involved taking the lung out. So it's the photodynamic therapy that we believe allows us to do that. And again, coming back to that, that picture, when you take out the cancer, you always have this microscopic or invisible disease left behind. When Dr. Simone does the photodynamic therapy, we think that there's a possibility that some of these cells are sort of acting, these cells that have been killed, they're microscopic disease, they're there, they've been treated with the photodynamic therapy. The possibility exists that they're acting almost like a tumor vaccine, if you will. That said, we, we don't know if it's actually working and what we're working toward now is to establish whether or not the photodynamic therapy is helping our patients with a randomized trial where we're going to do the surgery, the lung sparing surgery with the standard chemotherapy and plus or minus the intraoperative photodynamic therapy. And the reason we're doing this is that, frankly, our results, we're, we're not married to doing photodynamic therapy or this lung sparing surgery. We're, we're married to doing what we think is going to be best for our patients. And right now, we're not aware of anything anyone else is doing that is better or even, frankly, equal to the results that we've seen with, with the lung sparing surgery, with the photodynamic therapy. Um, I do think that the surgery is one option, but one of the things at Penn that is unique is our immunotherapy program. And I think Dr. Sturman can tell us about some yeah, of this. We'll really get to that in just a second. We did have a question regarding the photodynamic therapy, which was, Dr. Simone, there's a question about light sensitivity after photodynamic therapy. Can you explain what that is and what precautions patients may need to take after photodynamic therapy? 
Yeah, so as I just said a few minutes ago, the light sensitizer that we give makes the treatment more effective because the cancer cells are more sensitive to the laser therapy that we use in the operating room. They're more likely to die from that treatment. Unfortunately, though, all cells in the body are at hypersensitive to light. So not just the light therapy that we're administering in the operating room, but other lights as well, particularly sunlight. Uh, the l length of sensitivity varies according to which drug we're administering as a light sensitizer. Uh, it can be as quick as hours or as long as several weeks, but typically it's on the order of about two to six weeks that patients are sensitive to light. It's to some degree sensitive to room light as well, particularly something like a halogen light, but typically incandescent bulbs, um, lights like this, standard LED bulbs are not going to be an issue. Uh, and just getting back to one point, as we talked about surgery not being a standard approach, and, and Dr. Pieberg just mentioned that that 80-year-old wouldn't have been able to tolerate taking out the lung. Uh, 